Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to New York. Just your bit of Adele. Let me try this again. How about that? Whoo. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another District Alter Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Is it deja vu in here, or is it just me, sir? It may be everyone. Man, you miss a week and you just forget how to say words. Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this... tough, but I have faith in you, sir. Ah, well, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, I am your host, Charles, and I'm joined once again by the Pilfer Connor himself, Zelius. It is good to see you that you are alive and that you have. Not passed into the ether. Instead, we're here doing ether over tubes. Yes. Well, you see, what happened was I somehow, my allergies and like a cold and maybe like a little sprinkling of flu all came together and created this bastard baby that knocked my socks off all of last week. So your respiratory system basically stopped working is what it sounds like. Yeah, like if I breathed, I was going to be hacking up a lung. Well, you should at least keep one of your lungs intact. I that's and hence why we didn't do a show is because I was too busy steaming it up so that I could breathe. <coughs> Ew. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this of course is a Thursday night hangout. This is a show for you where we try our best to cover the topics most important to you. Now, if you haven't submitted your topic, have no fear. All you got to do is drop it in the chat, be you on Facebook, on YouTube, or on Twitch, and you can add it that way. Of course, we want your voice and opinion on any of the topics we present, so please do not be shy. It is time for the show. And the first thing, my friends, is... And this is kind of like a nerd, kind of like an, an older nerd uh, type of excitement here. But uh, there is going to be a Monkey Island sequel. Finally. Um, this was Monkey Island, of course, was originally developed and released uh, under LucasArts. And, of course, LucasArts was bought by Disney. And then, of course, Disney... Um, has a tendency to hold on to their intellectual properties, um, and um, and as as you know, as a super gamer, I and 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 a a, a gamer who loves quality, it it really hurt my feelings that Disney didn't want to give the game back over to Tim Schafer and uh, Ron Gilbert, the the two original guys behind the the Monkey Island series. Now apparently that has changed. Ironically, this the 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 last attempt I remember of them trying to uh, get the rights back was right before the MomoCon. It might have been the last MomoCon that there was that we went to because um, I interviewed. Um, um, oh gosh, down bl- blanking out, uh, Spectre, um, the guy, the like the huge. Disney fan, and I asked him pointedly, you know, what, what's your opinion about uh, IP holders not not allowing original creators access to the IPs they made? Um, you know, the, they're the reason why those IPs are that awesome. Yep. Um, Phil Spector, that's his name. Um, <clears throat> which, by the way, if you want to check out the interview, you can, of course, go to... Uh, Alter Confusion and check our interview section or go to YouTube or you can just type in MomoCon Phil Spector uh, f- under the Alter Confusion channel and you can uh, watch it from there. Now, what am I... So, Ventures of Mike Island now is like one of the major point-and-click adventures when Mr. Yep. Charlie and I were growing up. Um, that was one of the OGs. But one of my favorite things is looking at the... so. You can actually still get the OG, well, as original as it is, Circuit of Monkey Island on Steam. Yep. One of my favorite things, just to kind of age us, is the system requirements. And it is? The processor is a Pentium 4 3 gigahertz or AMD Athlon 64 with 256 megabytes of RAM or 512 for Vista um, with 128 megabyte um, shader graphics card. What's amusing to me is DirectX 9.0 still. Uh, I mean, there's games coming out now that still use that. I wonder if that. I, I I wonder if if it requires DOSBox because of how old it is. 
almost like it's emulated within a DOS box environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would not be surprised. It doesn't say on there, um, but that would definitely not surprise me given the age of the game for sure. Uh, I, mean, I remember back when I was a kid watching my older brother play that mm-hmm. up in our bonus room. Yep. Uh, we've got a comment from the, uh, from the audience, D and D an idea bard who has a warlock's summoning book thinking it's old songs and he keeps accidentally summoning demons and thinks they just show up because they love his singing. Of course, he also bangs them because he's a bard. That actually sounds like something right out of a Nerdburger Games RPG. Not gonna lie. Or, or, well, actually, after watching the first season of Vox Machina, that yeah. sounds like exactly Vox Machina, which, by the way, I finally caved in. And I don't know why I was so hesitant about watching that. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely an RP heavy um, type of idea, which I'm sure people have done it. Oh, yeah. Um, Yes, I, I highly recommend that you watch it. It definitely sets itself up for a second season. Um, oh, for God's sakes. Um, I haven't seen any of those. I'm not going to lie. The uh, So I've, I have kind of watched some of the critical... I might have watched like a um, like a like an episode or, or two of the Critical Role stuff. Um, but I don't know. Like for me, I can't... I, I, I like the fact that with uh, the by the way, Vox Bikina is a, is an Amazon Prime exclusive. It was successfully kickstarted for those of you who want to know, um, and it was based off of like a an online D and D that was um, D uh, um, campaign that was DM by this amazing guy Matt Mercer, and they have like a bunch of recognizable voice actors. Uh, for all the pieces, for all the characters. They're just, you know, they're all buddy-buddy. And um, I have to say, yes, Critical Role is awesome. Thank you, Clark. Um, if, if you're curious as to who Alex is, it's uh, my, my brother-in-law. So we should sing along for the show? No, we should not do a sing-along for the show. It's a terrible maybe idea. There's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, yes. Um, see, the thing is, like, I don't know when when what they did is they basically took a campaign and they animated it, which was amazing. And those everybody who's part of that group are just um, above and beyond creative. But for me, if I'm gonna, I I just I can't watch people, you know role play without like visual aids. Now I don't remember if Critical Role did did that. I know that Will Wheaton did something like that. I want to call it Titan not Titan Fall, but Titan something. Um and it was through the Geek and Sundry network. Oh yeah. But um but they they basically just had a bunch of people sitting around doing their stuff and then they would like put in I think it's like still shots of of um sessions and whatnot which was kind of cool i don't know i I, i'm me i grew up with rpgs okay i want to play um you know i want to actually be involved in it i mean hell uh zelius and i a titan's grave thank you um which was phenomenal and i'm sad that they didn't do a second season um but um actually you know what's another great one now now i'm thinking about it uh if you could ever find Harmon's Quest. It's Dan Harmon, one of the creators behind um, Rick and Morty. Um, uh, he has his own like Dungeons and Dragons, which he calls like I think it's, he calls it like a a, uh, a what is it? He he doesn't call it Dungeons and Dragons because he doesn't want to have to pay the royalties. But he has every single episode. He has like guests. Um, actor or actress who fills in kind of like this bit uh, role for that episode, which was, which is an interesting way to approach it as well. So, but, um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend Vox Bikina. That's I, I highly recommend Vox Bikina. I highly recommend, uh, Dan Harmon's, uh, quest. <laughs> it's, it's just funny as hell. So is Vox Bikina. I mean the, this, okay. I, I want, I do want to say one thing. 
Neither of those shows are for kids, okay? The language and the content. Not uh, Zealys, what are you drinking? I'm drinking uh, bourbon, of course. I'm drinking uh, Hinkles or something. I forget the guy's name. It's like most of them are named after people. Well, of um, course. I can't remember. It's good, though. I like it. So, it's a uh, brand I usually get now. It's Is it Elijah Craig? It is definitely not Elijah Craig. Damn it. No. Well, I, I had to ask. Okay, so um, uh, an intro, So let, since we seem to have a, a bit of an active audience, um, let's move on to the next one. And this one, this is this basically hits. Um, uh, it, it probably hits a lot of gamers right in the cojones, metaphorically metaphorical cojones. Just in case you don't actually have cojones, just want to make that clear. Um, you don't and, want to talk about my cojones on the show, dude. Come on. And 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 and. Uh, the reason is apparently placed a lot of PlayStation owners, uh, for both PlayStation three and, uh, uh, PS Vita are saying that their digital games are starting to no longer work. And see this, this right here is the exact reason why I've always been hesitant about going strictly digital, allegedly. Um, you know, and, well, this is kind of, I mean, for me, digital gaming makes sense because I don't need all the additional boxes. For me, it was more, it was more digital movies and then, you know, services just going, nah, we don't know. We, you know, I know you bought like 17 movies, but we're closed in shops. So you lose access to them. But for this, you know, you're looking at at least, uh, I think it was Final Fantasy IV, um, Rune Factory, Oceans, Unit 13, and I can't remember. I think there's another one out there, but you know, um, that this is this to me is kind of like the nightmare scenario that I've always been uh scared of is you buy you you buying a game and then losing access to it at some point. Zeely's thoughts, yeah, no, it's definitely uh, it's a game you play pun intended, of getting, you know, playing basically the digital marketplace. Um, that's just for better or for worse. That's going to be the reality. And the first game that actually comes to my mind is Kingdom Hearts on the Switch. Um, so for those who don't oh, know. Fuck. That, that, of, that whole thing is fucked up, by the way. But okay, go, Zillies. Well, so a lot of Switch um, of their digital marketplace games, especially the older games that were for like the older consoles, um, you're, you never actually download the game. They're basically third, they're played through a server. Um, so you're never actually, I mean, you, you never really technically own a game, but you really, really don't own a game in, uh, some of the switch games and even PlayStation with PlayStation now already has that, um, Microsoft does it too with some of the games with some of their games. So it's, it, it's a thing. Um, that is here. It's basically the um, oh, what's the um, Google service? The um, the online gameplay. Um, Stadia. Yeah, thank you. It's basically the Stadia on your consoles already. Uh, both Microsoft and Sony do it, and Switch. All three of them do it. And the reality is, is when that service is cut off, you are totally cut off. The part that frustrates me more, though, is it seems like. If anything, it should be able to give a better platform to be able to emulate these old um, systems so that basically we can virtually play any old video game we wanted instead of almost being like further locked out than we already were. Okay, so I so software emulation is a bitch and a half. And the funny thing is, the more you update software emulation for older games, the more likely you are to break the older games well, because you're trying thing. to optimize a bunch of stuff. Nonprofit and open source already emulators that get like 99.5% of the gameplay there as it is already. I cannot believe that Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo, if they actually invested the resources into proper emulation, could not make it happen. I just have an extremely hard time believing in that. It's more so that they just choose not to. No. Okay. So I, I had this argument 
with the developer and, and I had to cave because I was like, I don't understand. You know, it's the same fucking platform. The problem is that the that when you're updating the platform to make it more stable, to try to cover more games, there's a there's a because you're making a code change, there's a much bigger chance of breaking another game or more games. So the thing is, if you actually look at the game libraries out there, this is why you don't see everything going digital. This is why I personally love the fact that my my PlayStation 3 had hardware has hardware emulation. Is it has the chip. It's not trying to, you know, monkey around with stuff. Um, and uh, Clark says, uh, Sony eventually wants to funnel everyone to PlayStation now where we own nothing. Uh, Zeos, of course, res responded. It's the same thing as Microsoft service. It, it's Game Pass. Games as a service. And that's what that's really what we're getting to is, is games as a service. Um, where it, it's basically the Netflix model, but for video gaming. I mean, uh, it's even like online, like games you play locally. Like I played a lot of, for instance, like Outriders. Mm -hmm. You cannot play that without online gameplay if you're playing single player only. Same thing. I know experience that with Diablo 3, where it's a single player game, or you can play it as single player, I should say, but you're still have to have online. Side into an online platform regardless. And I love the bullshit of, well, it's so that we can uh, keep the cheats out of the game. It's a single player game. If you're cheating, you're hurting yourself. Okay. Or you're helping yourself. I don't care. I, 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 I hate online, always single player games. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Just wait until Zelda becomes an online only game. It's going to become like mass effect. Okay. All sudden, let, let's it has the online gameplay. Element. Let, let's, let's, let's rewind that back. Look at Nintendo's track record when it comes to online components. Oh, they sure. still can't figure this shit out. With the exception of this Kingdom Hearts thing, because that's Square Enix, which is total crap. Like, you have to stream it to, to play it, which, you know, uh, whatever. How much do you hate it? I hate it. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, don't worry. Charlie will hate everything on video games. Like, watching the show, does Charlie actually like video games? I love <laughs> well-made video games. Ah, but Kingdom Hearts is a well-made game. Yes, but this is a re-release. I'm talking about original releases. Re-releases, then it gets a little shady. It's then they were getting into penny pinching. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, I, I don't, the future is, it's going to be a service. And the unfortunate thing is because of our beautiful, uh, ISPs, we're going to get just really stomped in the, in the, as my children would put it, the no, no square. Um, because look, I'm at my, I, I hit my data cap every single month now, like with like two days to spare, I'm, I'm having to pay penalties now. I mean, it is kind of funny because you think about it, like somebody like you versus me, where it's me and my cat only, and she doesn't do a lot of streaming during the day. I don't go through like, I mean, myself alone, I hit about two to 300 gigabytes per month, which averaged up to four to five people in a household. Doesn't take long to hit that terabyte data cap. Yeah. Um, so it is kind of silly in a way that there aren't different services for almost like different sized families because of course your family is going to use more data than mine, even though we pay the same per month. Well, the other thing is I've got, we've, I'm, uh, my wife and I both work virtually. So oh, yeah. that's also chewing up a huge chunk as well. So, but anywho, let's talk. Well, speaking of old games, there, uh, there were three people. Data caps make me vote communist. <laughs> you need to, you need to play the game. Um, oh, what the hell? What did I just, what did I just put up for the patrons? Um, the irony curtain, uh, with love fr from Metrioshka, where it they make communism sound awesome until they actually visit the communist nation. It's just fucked up. Actually, it was, it's. 
it's Russia, but it's not, but it is. Um, but the last game you have on Patreon is Airborne Kingdom. No, no, that was that was the review, not the the playthrough. Ah, right, right. Um. Oh, yep, I see it. Um. Now you made me lose this. Okay. Oh, oh. Speaking of uh, international news, um, there were three individuals who were arrested in London because of their unofficial Club Penguin uh, site. Now, I never. I mean, I knew of Club Penguin, but I would. I think I was. I think we're all too old for Club Penguin. Club Penguin is like this super duper, like popular website. Uh, I think. Disney ended up owning it in the end. Um, yeah, I think it, let's see here. Um, Cub Penguin Island in 2017, 2018. Uh, there's been, it was originally launched in 2005. It had more than 200 million registered users. There's been unofficial clones that have popped up uh, thanks to COVID. And it would appear that three were three men were arrested in connection to Club Penguin rewritten on suspicion of distributing materials infringing copyright. Which I know part of me goes, but they're doing it for the fans. But at the same time, if they're making any money, then yeah, go go nuts on them. Um it's kind of like, I I remember Matrix Online, like the last days of Matrix Online. Oh, I lost Zelius. Um, I remember the last days of Matrix Online and them having, um, like people trying to reverse engineer the data as it was, as everything was closing down. And of course you had those individuals and Zelius is back. Hello! Uh, and uh, and you had those individuals who are trying to stay on. The, you know, it, it's one of those. If I stay on the server, they can't shut it down. Um, I wonder whatever happened to that. <laughs> yes, that's right. Zelius gets uh, kicked offline when we start talking data caps. Yes, we are being watched as we try to talk crap about the ISPs and they have retribution on us. Oh, uh, and, and for those real quick, um, when Zilius left, the picture that popped up is my dog, Arlo, uh, because it, it does the, the, the logo icon for the, the initializer of the hangout. And we do it through Thank Google. You, hangout. I kind of took offense at that. Um, uh, but Soon we're gonna to have to figure out something new because Google is is trying desperately to sunset uh, the way that we do our show, and the new way doesn't really work. So Google Meetup does not do very well. But that's besides. Or me. you need to convert your Google actually to the new one. I think that's the problem. No, I've I've got I've done it with the other one, and it's absolute shit. Oh, it doesn't work. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. It's right. You go back to right. Yahoo Chat. We, we need to, uh, we'll figure it out. Don't worry, Skype. ladies and gentlemen, we'll figure it out, okay? We'll figure it out. Anyways. Instagram. Anyways, as I was saying, you know, so, um, when you steal someone's IP, you're gonna get in trouble, especially if you're making money off it. Or, the unfortunate thing is, if it gains too much popularity, even if you're doing it for the love of the series. But if I never really can own it, can I really steal it? Oh boy, here we go. Let's do well now that um, yes, Arlo pees on yes, my dog is very excitable and has a tendency to pee on my little sister. Oh well, that's just Arlo's way of saying hi. Yes, of course. Um, oh oh, so yes, can you actually Zelius? Stupid, you're you're. Can you really own anything? In 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 Russia, no one owes nothing <laughs> except for Putin. And it was, <laughs> even then, it, you don't know where it's going to go. 
Yeah, exactly. But no, I mean, I remember Matrix Online and a lot of people trying to reverse engineer that. And I remember that uh, Star Wars Galaxy, this was like the big one where you had a ton of people that tried to capture like all the old code before they did some huge overhaul and basically, from my understanding, broke the whole game. You had all these uh, happy, you know, these, these unhappy people who literally try to build their own original Star Wars Galaxy um, servers so that they could uh, play the game the way they liked it. But, yeah. Well, that's because they went and screwed up Star Wars Galaxy. Yeah, they, they like, revamped everything. I mean, that's, like, what they... I mean, that was the big thing with WoW Vanilla is they had all the knockoff WoW servers for the vanilla version because people wanted the original version. The original I really version. wanted to work hard to get where I need to go. Still, my favorite episode of South Park always, Make Love, Not Warcraft, which was literally them grinding Warcraft. forever to to beat the the uh, player killer. Hey, you know, it's still true. Words never spoken. Yep, it's true. I digress. Okay, kids, we're gonna st- we're gonna pause for a second to do friends of the show. The, these are these amazing individuals who have uh, become patrons of Alter Confusion to help Alter Confusion do what we do best. So, without further ado, let me do some shout outs here, and the first one has to be the one and the only the Indie Cluster. The Indie Cluster is an organization of independent game developers that want to gain exposure by being involved in the community. They collectively journey to popular conferences as a traveling booth to help gain attention for their games. They make partnerships in local communities to bring games to the mainstream mindset. They highlight local, unusual, and rare concepts to challenge the paradigm of the common. They also host events to teach kids and minority groups about game development to hopefully one day enter the industry themselves. For more information, go to IndieCluster.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-C-L-U-S-T-E-R dot com. All right, the next shout out we have got to do is to our friend, our fellow warrior in the media world, and that, of course, is Noodle Boy Media. Founded in 2015 by Andrew Tran, Noodle Boy Media, previously Wet Kid 47 Media, is your choice for professional photo shoots and panel recordings at conventions. They pride themselves in providing a high level of professionalism, top-notch experiences, and quality services. If you want more information and to view their full list of services, check out facebook.com slash noodleboymedia. Now, this next one is especially awesome for anyone in the greater Atlanta area, and that, of course, is Hero Chiropractic. Hero Chiropractic is a unique healthcare practice set up by Ryan Moore. The company's focus to elevate a patient's experience of freedom, creative expression, and joy. They believe that everyone can be a hero and has incredible heroic potential inside themselves waiting to be unleashed. Hero Chiropractic focuses on mobile chiropractic care in the greater Atlanta area. They are committed to healing clients by creating a plan of action uniquely suited for each person. They make that plan of action as convenient and affordable as possible, and most importantly, suited to your individual needs. For more information, go to www.herochiropractic.com. And I don't know, I think the picture always reminds me of Tom Brady. Weird. And finally, the the I guess the the latest and greatest, and uh, actually friend of both myself and uh, I believe the individual who's driving the Alex H- Head account right now, and that is Crosspad Creative. Need a logo or want to work on a full branding and content strategy, or maybe you need music or audio for your content. Crosspad Creative creates a whole offers a whole list of solutions for individuals and small businesses. Just email josh at crosspadcreative at gmail.com and see what he can do for you. <coughs> Whew, that last voice made my my throat tickle. Oh, dear. All right, now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I think you know where this is going next, and that is we have to do some Alt Confusion stuff real quick. And the first thing is... For the 11th year straight, Alter Confusion will be proudly fundraising for Extra Life. 
Extra Life is gamers doing what they do best, game, to help sick and injured children at their children their chosen Children's Miracle Network Hospital. The money that we raise through Extra Life will go directly to Children's Healthcare Atlanta as unrestricted funds. This means that the hospital decides where and how to spend the money to ensure the dollars we raise make the biggest impact in the lives of the kids they treat. So if you have the capacity to donate, please go to extra-live.org and search for Altered Confusion. Now, uh, we did hint at that uh, we had some friends of the show who are patrons. Uh, So if you would like to become a friend of the show, then I've got some good news for you. Altered Confusion has a Patreon page. Whoops. Uh, Alter Confusion survives on the love and support of fans like you. And so we have a Patreon page. Patreon lets you, the fans, the lovers, the haters, the demigods, the extraterrestrials, the interdimensional beings, the sorcerers, the warlocks, the undead priestesses, and supporters to become active participants in the work we love through a monthly membership. This gives you access to exclusive content, community, and insight into our creative process. In exchange, we gain a bit more freedom to do our best work and the stability we need to build an even stronger creative career. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, tell you right now, there are two tiers. There's one, two tiers. The first one is a $1 tier. That is a $1 a month or $12 a year tier and what that will get you is early access to all of our playthroughs as well as the ability to take part in polls and communications to help shape the future of Alter Confusion. Now, if you're feeling a little bit frisky, um, and no, we do not have an OnlyFans site. Thank you. But uh, if you're feeling a little bit more frisky, there's a $5 a month or $60 a year, which will make you a friend of the show. You remember that section we just did where I listed all those amazing individuals? You, too, could be added to that. Both or, Either your organization or your name will be added to every single Thursday night hangout. And, of course, you'll also gain all the other privileges of the dollar tier. So, if you have the capacity, please... Become a patron of Ultra Confusion. Help support what we love to do. And just as a uh, a side note, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not, if you decide that you do not want to, uh, you do not feel safe or comfortable about doing financial support, but perhaps you want to give something to Ultra Confusion to showcase on the show or to add to Charlie's addiction, be it energy drinks, Mountain Dew, or Funko Pops, then. Boy, oh boy, do I have a surprise for you, and that is we have a physical mailing address. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to send anything to Ultra Confusion, send it to 1551 Dunwoody. That's D U N W O O D Y, Village Parkway. And this next part is super duper 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 important. Number 88276. Without that number 88276, it will just go to the post office and be returned to you. That number 88276 is the P.O. Box number. Super duper important. The city, of course, is Dunwoody, D-U-N-W-O-O-D-Y. The state is Georgia, 30338. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what else do we have in store for the show? Because we are, we have gone, done everything that we needed to do. Wait, we have? Yes. It just means it's time to drink more, man. As much as I would love to continue or or enhance my drinking uh, at the um, at the current juncture, I believe that it'd probably not be the best idea. Do you fools have to work tomorrow? No. Uh, I don't okay. know. For for those out there who are cure, who are wondering and maybe scared that this might be happening, Eve Online CEO CCP Crowd Control Productions uh, has come out and said. NFTs are not going to be a part of EVE Online. I like So it has to be like a special deal if an NFT, it can't just be like business as normal, life goes on. It has to be like, no, a special announcement to let you know we are not doing these stupid things that nobody actually understands what they do. Exactly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for those out there who may not know what EVE Online is, I consider EVE Online that, that MMO you do while you're doing something else. For some reason, I kept like I've I finally broken the habit. But I used to like every two or three years, I jump back into Eve Online, 
And it literally is like the game that you would go, okay, I need you to go over to this and mine these asteroids. It's 17 jumps. So I'm going to set the course and then I'm going to uh, go make, my, make myself a sandwich, maybe get a car wash, fill the car with gas. And hopefully by the time I get back, I'm two jumps away from being able to mine the asteroid. Clark says, NFTs and games aggravate, aggregate? I believe he's meant aggravate, or maybe aggregate Aggra my hemorrhoids. Sure. I mean, aggregation of hemorrhoids would actually be a bad thing, too. Yes. That would be that would be terrible. Ah. Like, the more NFTs there are, the more hemorrhoids you get. What is an NFT? Google it. I, I don't, and even after reading that, whatever the hell it says, you're still not going to understand what the it is. It's a non-fungible token. It's like a variation of a crypto coin, basically in the form of a art piece. Is the best way I can describe it. it. It's 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 a moment in time it's that becomes a, yours. It's also another made-up currency, basically, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I, it really yeah. sounds like a way to smuggle <laughs> illegal money. That's all. That's pretty sure what it is. Ah, oh, new laundering method. I mean, that's basically a cryptocurrency for. Um, I just, I, I just remembered. I, I had a note here, and I'm, I just remembered to actually look at said note, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to point out that we are getting ever closer to this beautiful, amazing convention called Momocon. Momocon is a convention that's been in Atlanta for quite a bit of time, and unfortunately, because of COVID, uh, it has been canceled the past two years. Uh, Momocon will be occurring from May 26th to May 29th of 2022 down at the Georgia World Congress Center. I am happy to report that Alta Confusion will have a fan table there. I personally will be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we also have uh, we also have our panel uh, that has been um, verified. And of course, I just blanked on it. I believe it's seven o'clock on Thursday. I think you said Thursday, yeah. Yeah, I think I just I I know it's on Thursday. I, I want to say it's seven o'clock on Thursday. I'm blanking on the actual Uno Momentos. I will I will check real quick because uh, I because I sent it to Zelius. Yes, it is Thursday at seven o'clock, uh, and the name of the panel for those interested is called. Video games changing for the good? good? Question mark. Are they changing for the bad? Well, seeing how we started the show with people losing access to their older games on more, as they now call it, classic console. PlayStation 3 is now a classic console, which to me just, classic console is an NES to me. I mean, got them oh. on. I mean, if they're not sold new within the last generation, I would consider PS3 a classic console at this point. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not even like, I mean, because you got this generation, you got your last generation. So what comes before last gen? Oh, it, that, that does last is go, gen? straight, straight Western to, gen? you the just go straight to classic. Gen? Then what do you call a Nintendo ancient gen? Just, yeah, it's ancient. N64, yep. I mean, it's one pretty big category, to be fair. And I, For me personally, and, and I'm sure that I'm not uh, alone in this, N64 will always be the golden eye box. It's the golden eye console. Yeah. All we are are dust in the wind. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Why you got to hurt my feelings like that? Retro classic. Oh God. See, the problem is when I hear retro classic, I think of those that the money grabbing little shit tastic moves of we we made these mini consoles filled with all of your favorite games. Guess what, dipshit? The 60 or 50 games that you have on there, three of them are my favorite. The rest of them, total garbage in my opinion. But yeah, the best, everyone's favorite. I hate when, when that's false advertisement. I should sue everyone if I had the time or the money. I wish you luck in that. 
Maybe you could take out an NFT loan in order to fund your lawsuit. Nah, I'll do it through Dogecoin. Don't worry. I don't own any Dogecoin, by the way. Oh, you're missing out on the point zero 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 one penny worth of a Bitcoin. Yeah, no. I only I have uh, uh, Litecoin, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, and then. Do you actually have any real Bitcoin? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I don't I, like. I own like I owned five dollars of it. I say, if you own like a whole Bitcoin, I'd actually be impressed. No, God, no. Uh, that would, <laughs> I would uh, that I'd make me very happy if I was. By the way, if, if you've watched, uh, was it Beware of the Bitcoin King on Netflix? That's some messed up stuff, dude. And this is why cryptocurrency will never be taken seriously because of the shit that could be pulled. Uh, that was shown showcased in that documentary. Oh, by the way, someone has now beaten um, Elden Ring in seven minutes. Was it you? Fuck you no. You decide to get serious no. and get good? I, what is it? I put like 32 hours in there just so that I could get my ass whooped by the first boss. No, it's not me. I'm sorry. I will never, ever be like, wow, you did an amazing speed, uh, the quickest speed run in an open world game. Open, okay. If you do a speed run that's a, through a linear game and it's like an impressive amount of time, then I'm then I'm going, holy shit, that's awesome. But doing an open world game, that's like, let me just not do any of the game. So you're not impressed by somebody who beat an open world game that you can't beat at all? Okay. I I played I beat Skyrim. And someone beat it in sixteen dollars. Is like it's not worth your time. You could beat it in sixteen minutes. Did the person actually say it's not yes. worth your time? Or yes. Some other dipshit. No, no, no. The, the speed runner goes. I beat the game sixteen minutes. It's not worth the sixty dollars at the time. Like mm-hmm. what? Uh, Clark says I barely beat the first boss in twenty hours. I've never beat the boss. I threw in the towel. I said fuck it. I'd rather not destroy controllers because in Elden Ring. Uh, if you die, there's a very good chance that it's going to take you a couple hours to like rebuild your inventory of like spells or throwable objects or crossbow bolts and all that shit. I don't have, I, I just couldn't, the rinse and repeat was just, oh my God, it was driving it was me nuts. too much for you. Yeah. Sonic 2 apparently is breaking all the box office numbers. Uh, hopefully Nintendo is paying attention. So this next Mario venture, which I still don't understand why they have Chris Pratt is the voice of Mario. Hopefully, I did not even know that it was out. Cause no, no, the, the, really what Sonic out. two. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been out since the beginning of April. I haven't also been to a theater since before COVID and I don't really care because I like sitting in the comfort of my own house. Well, there's not scared, weary people around who are sitting there on their cell phones, smacking popcorn behind you and kicking your chair and just being obnoxious dipshits. You know what the beautiful thing is? There's not that many people there in the 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 only or the places that I go. Uh, well, the, uh, and also the places that I would go have reserved seating. Uh, my wife and I had a date night and went to see the the last Spider-Man No Way Home when yep. it was in theaters. And that was a good movie. That's a very good movie. Yeah, I'll see it one of these years. It made me cry, but I'm not going to tell you why, because I don't want to ruin it. But it made me cry. Yeah, it's the only problem with like not going to theaters lately is I haven't seen like any of the newer Marvel or any like basically movie I actually care about. Then you got to get Disney Plus. Well, the Spider-Man wouldn't help you with Disney Plus because that's a Sony property, but... Will it come out in Disney Plus, though? No. Oh. As far as I know, I don't think so. Because none of the Spider-Men are on there. Oh, they're not? Okay. I didn't know if like maybe they figured out like some side deal for that. Mm, not unless they start paying a bunch of money. Yeah. That, that I mean, the all of X-Men are going to be there because, you know, Disney bought Fox. Just wait until Disney buys everyone? <laughs> yeah, Disney, Disney's getting there. Disney's getting there, Amazon's getting there, Google's getting there, Microsoft's well, Elon getting there. Musk decided he wants to buy Twitter now. 
No, no, no. He he bought a controlling share. He's not being buying the whole thing. He said he wants to though. He offered a bid of like fifty-one bucks per share or something crazy. Yeah, but but he doesn't want to be on the the board. He just wants it for the one person who like tracks all his flights, so you can kick him off Twitter. <laughs> something like that. Like this stupid dipshit. This guy's really annoying me. Uh, if you circling back to conventions, QuakeCon uh, 2022 is going to happen, but it's going to be a digital only event in August. I don't yeah. think I've, I don't think to be totally honest with you, I've never had an interest in QuakeCon. I mean, if I or were into Quake and I like playing it, then I probably would be, but like, I'm just not into it because yeah. I'm also, I feel like Quake though is also one of those games. Like if you have not been playing it for the last 20 years at this point, it would just be a little too painful to just kind of jump into. True. Like, cause I mean, people have been playing Quake for ever. Is, is Rooster T is RTX happening this year? Rooster Teeth uh, Expo? I mean, that's something wackhead for sure now. Well, it looks like it is actually happening July 1st through the 3rd, 2022 in Austin, Texas. I do need to catch up on Ruby. I haven't seen Ruby in eons. There's eight seasons of it, I think. What? How many? Eight, I think. Oh, okay. Because I think I've seen like six or seven. I think. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of all the conventions I've been to. I, I've I've been... I, I've gotten the invite. Okay. I... I, I want to put this out here. I just want to be very, very upfront. I love going to conventions. It is one of my favorite things because I get to interact with amazing individuals, get to talk, shop, nerdy stuff, which sometimes I don't get to talk that much about during the week. But I know for a fact I cannot do a convention one weekend and the very next weekend do another convention. That's and- a lot. As much as there there is a convention that uh, that happens the week after Momocon, and I had a lot of fun there. Did I fly solo? No. Uh, Axthelm helped me, came in to the rescue and helped me at that one. Um, which hopefully he's doing. Actually, he just uh, he's about to publish a book. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll find, I, if you want more information about his book, I think it has to do with, uh, agile testing. Um, no, that's actually not cool. I take back what I said. What you rather do waterfall? Um, uh, I'm going to stick to my six belt black Sigma. Actually, I heard that that's a racket is total shit, but that's besides the point. Like most things, though, it comes down to does your business actually implement it in a correct no, way? No. Or like most of the wait, whoa, 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 whoa. People act companies actually implementing things the way they're supposed to doesn't happen. Oh, they try. Like when your morning stand up meeting becomes a two hour bitch fest. What bitch fest? Never mm. heard of it. So I have a question for you, sir. Yes, sir. So on the PC, because that's what you're playing Elden Ring on is PC, right? Yes. So you can download like easy mod versions of Elden Ring. Uh-huh. So basically you mod it to make the game easier by like increasing your stats or like defanging the enemies. But do you have any appeal or thoughts about like using a mod like that? Because obviously the developer does not like that. They want it to be the real authentic version so what are your thoughts on like basically using that to basically the equivalent of what would be an easy mode if they had provided difficulty versions? I do not I do not condone mods. No, really? okay, no, 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 no. Let me let me let me rephrase that. Uh I don't I don't want to use something that is going to cheapen the game. Um so it only cheapens it because the developer did not authorize a easy mode in the. Like okay, so and Zeus is gone again. It's because he keeps talking. We're, we keep talking about internet stuff. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I think where Zeus is going is, uh, I'm I'm all for like mods that help like you know like with mapping or with um, 
Ooh, that's just a creepy uh <laughs> Faith Resilius. Um for like, you know, uh functionality. But when you actually when it actually dicks around with like components of uh enemy HP or slows down the enemy stats, then that's where I'm kind of like even if it's hard as balls, which is what it is. It's a very hard as balls game. I don't think, um, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not the person, the type of gamer who, who's going to do well with the mods that, that simplify things so that I could feel better. But how's that any different than like choosing a different difficulty mode from the menu? Because that was, that was, if the developers make that modification, then yeah, sure. I'm for it. But if an outside party does it, then no. Eh, okay, fair I, enough. I, the, the thing is, for better or for worse, the, the developers have made the, the enemy health and speed and whatever this. If, if I am in the minority, which I know that I am, it with me having to constantly bitch and moan about the first boss, then and and then no, I'm I'm not gonna I won't take the easy way out in a game. If the game is hard as balls and I'm playing on normal mode and they have an easy mode, then fuck yes, I will turn on that easy mode in a heartbeat to make myself feel like a superior gamer. But I'm not going to. I, I I don't want a third party monkey wrench to change things. the The only time that I had that was uh, in the original days of uh, Diablo. There was a third party program that you could create your own weapons and ship them into the game, and you could make like these OP like weapons that would just tear anything to shreds. And that was just. I'd, I'd already beaten Diablo, and that was just, you know, kind of like shits and giggles time, you know? It wasn't like, oh, God, this game's so hard. I need to make, like, the Sword of Awesomeness plus 17. Yeah. <clears throat> but just think, you can get the accomplishment of beating the game. No, thank you. If I have no. to cheat my way to do it, then I don't want to do it. Fair enough. No, well, I, I, okay. There's only one game that I will be okay with cheating, and I think that I, I think that I am not in the minority when I say this. But fucking Monopoly, I will pump some extra dollars. There's a reason I just won't play Monopoly in the first place. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't want to play it. But if I'm forced to play it, I'm palming some money. No, I will not play it. I'll be like, I will actually just go home. What if you're on vacation with your family? You can't really go home. I can go read a book or, oh no, there's a work emergency. <laughs> I have very strong, strong feelings about non-monopoly. Or be like, hell, I will actually go to the Target and go buy freaking another copy of Ticket to Ride just to get out of playing Monopoly. Just get the kid version. Like, sorry, I only play Monopoly Junior. <laughs> it can't be any worse than the OG. It's it's a much m more bearable game. You mean it won't last eight hours? You won't want to actually murder your family members by the end? It may still last quite a bit of time, but the murder's rage is lower. Well, there you go. Because let's be honest, when you're playing when you're playing board games with your family, that even if it's you know could be a quick game, there is going to be tempers flaring. Yep. Cause I just played, um, Catan junior with my kids and, um, I watched my, as one of my, uh, my youngest son decided just to like steamroll through a bunch of, uh, trades. And I'm like, son of a bitch, what the hell just happened? Nice. The problem I have with Catan is that's one of those games where like, it could be like a three hour game. Yep. You can know within the first like half hour, who's going to win based on like what their initial roles are. And like, as soon as you figure out who's going to have like the right resource allocation, you're like, well, they're going to win, but I guess we'll sit here for the next two hours anyways. 
Okay, so question for you, Zelius. If there was to be a new expansion for World of Warcraft, would you go back? No. <laughs> you're done. You're done. Done with WoW now. I don't even know like when expansions for World of Warcraft come out. To be honest, I mean, I'm also embedded in the world of Final Fantasy 14 again, and I'm enjoying it. So I'm pretty much stuck in 14 at this point. To be honest. Um, yeah, that uh, I know that's a, not the long-winded version you're looking for, but I don't see myself really playing World of Warcraft again. I think I think I'm uh, past it. I think I think part of it too is just knowing. So when I picked up Final Fantasy XIV again, mm -hmm. I basically had to play through a couple expansions, but I'd already played up to that point so much of the game. Um, and just knowing, like, even with World of Warcraft, I there'd be, like, hundreds of hours to basically catch up. And that's just, to like, get to a break-even point, basically, of where everyone else is. And that is kind of one of the hard parts of the modern MMOs, like a 14 or a while that have been out for, you know, over a decade, basically, um, is that catch-up, both from a gear perspective a play skill perspective a all the different systems i mean they all have like tons of different gameplay systems at the end it's not just one of them so it's just a combination of all that stuff to figure out as far as what's going on um yeah i had my days in world of warcraft um i think i'm pretty much good well, the reason why I asked is that apparent the rumor is that there's gonna be a new uh expansion announced um in five days. Yeah, nah. I mean, I like their life. They come out with World of Warcraft 2, a totally new version. Break from the current World of Warcraft. I'd probably check it out. Uh, but how, I, what, how big, like, that? every single time I hear, like, people going, you know, they're, you know, I'd get back in on World, World of Warcraft 2. Because you're not the only one who said that, who s says that. But at the same time, I'm going, okay, but how different is it really going to be because i, I, I just i think is, ever crack and ever crack too that's immediately what i think but i think a large part of it is the catch-up because you know that you have a game play a game a gamer database of players who've been playing for over a decade uh -huh. i think 15 years for of warcraft just knowing you're kind of that far behind in the chase that is honestly a large dis dis Disin oh my gosh, I can't use my words. Disincentivizes me. There you go. Uh -huh. From even picking it up in the first place. Whereas a new fresh MMO where you're kind of starting back at square zero, it almost would have been like honestly like jumping back into um vanilla wow. It's really kind of what it would have been. Mm -hmm. Um, which obviously I did not do. Um, it's really what it would be like. And of course, the question is though, will Blizzard ever even do World of Warcraft 2. Um, with will, with will Blizzard actually truly exist in more than just name? Because at this they're point... They're trying to. I mean, they're coming out with the Overwatch 2. Okay. Activision, Eventually. under the guise of Blizzard, are coming out with Overwatch 2. Blizzard, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to be the bearer, bearer of bad news, but the name exists, but the actual company is either in beyond hot water because of sexual harassment lawsuits or they'd be gone because Activision has been trying to empty that side of the house out for years since the merger. I, th I mean, yeah, at some point though, I feel like World of Warcraft needs to figure out how to move on, revitalize the user base is what it comes down to. I mean, Final Fantasy 14 has managed to do that. Uh, their user base which doesn't happen is going up. It's not decreasing. And for a game 10 years old, that really shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. But they've done such a phenomenal job with the story and the characters and everything else, where in large part, it's because people hear about like, holy crap, there's a, with an Endwalker leading up to from like a 10 years worth of story experience leading up to that. And people hear that and they want to jump in. They hear like everyone loves it. And it's also a great community and everything else. I don't know how 
at this point in its current state of World of Warcraft, how they can fix that and try to get a user base back that's increasing instead of losing members. And of course, there'll always be that small jump after an expansion. Like there's always a jump, but you look at the history of World of Warcraft and it's just that jump is getting less and less every time. You know, unfortunately, this sounds this when you started saying, you know, you're trying to find something fresh to bring back the user base, I immediately thought Overwatch. Yeah. And how they cannot bring out something that's uh, fresh. Well, they shot themselves in the foot with how long Overwatch 2 is coming out, and there's no interim experience in the current Overwatch. Yep. Like, if they did, like, a couple of maps and some characters, people wouldn't care about the delay for Overwatch 2, really. Or how about a new mode? Or any, yeah, anything. I think that's the issue is people, like, people will be fine with the delay of Overwatch 2 if they were still actively developing Overwatch 1, and they're not. At least with World of Warcraft, they're still coming out with expansions. And they're going to continue to probably indefinitely and as long as it's making money. Because uh, to your point, the problem is, what do you do about the uh, EverQuest issue? Yep. Where you're going to basically split your user base is a legitimate question. Um, I wonder how many... What? what I Speaking of uh, user bases, I'm very curious about the user base between Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV. Is Final Fantasy XI even still around? Yeah, I think so. Isn't it? I don't know. I don't even know if you can still play it or not. I'm pretty sure you can. I don't, I've never heard of them shutting it down. I mean, it's not large. <laughs> I assume it's still there. Oh, hey, this still online. I didn't know that. See, told you. It's got a free Windows client download. Woot! I played that for a bit, and then got then got completely um, scared to death of it because of uh, the fact that I played World of Warcraft first and Final Fantasy XI. There are no, there's nobody there to say, "Hey, I have a quest for you." I'm actually surprised, honestly, that the game still is around. I'm telling you, man, they're, they're, the people are hardcore. At this point, you got to be. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's a game that's bringing in a whole lot of new people just going on a limb here. Yeah. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to wrap this up. I'm, I'm looking at um, our stream strength, and it's starting to really start to fluctuate. So... Uh, for those who are who are still tuned in, I hope that we're still streaming to you. But uh, we're gonna. So what will you be playing this week, good sir? I'll be playing some more uh, uh, Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga. And what do you think of it so far? It's Legos. It's Star Wars. I love it. <laughs> what is not to like about it, sir? It's a lot of fun. It's got that Lego humor. But it's staying true to the story of Star Wars, so I can't, I can't, you know, I can't say anything bad about it. Are you basically replaying the original trilogy? Is that what it is? I played through the first three already, and now, yeah. now I've got the other six to go. Oof! Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Ultra Confusion Thursday night hangout for myself, Charlie, and Zelius. It's been a pleasure giving everything to come our heads, our mouths, and of course. Our hearts will be back next Thursday for another Ultra Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Remember, kids, keep on gaming in the free world. Amen to that, brother.